Hey everyone, it's Kristen. Welcome to this new episode of Explicitly Pro Life Podcast. I am live with my good friend Kira Davis. She is the editor uh, at large for Red State, and you may have heard her podcast. Um, Tina Whittington, our VP at Students for Life, is the biggest fan of the Kira Davis podcast. It's called Just listen to yourself it's fantastic i was actually listening uh to some episodes this morning as i was preparing for this podcast i was like damn that was good oh, so thank you. Uh, i'm so excited she's kicking my butt in the podcast game she has millions of downloads i don't think we're even <laughs> close to that uh you live here in southern california with your husband yep. you have two children right yes One's in college. One's in college and in one's, Chicago and one is here. All right. One is here. So, and you're also a dog person, it says in your bio. I'm a dog person. As a matter of fact, right before I got here today, the rescue that I work with uh, texted me to ask, could I take on a foster? Aww. So, well, when I get home, I might have a husky. Oh, that's so yeah. awesome. We have two puppies and I, I just bought a... Um, little Christmas stocking for the third puppy that I don't have yet, but I'm hoping is conceived in the next couple of months. Wow. Well, how many I was like, is this do weird? you have four? And two puppies going on three? Yeah, so we have two puppies and they're both a year old and then we have to add to the pack because we you know, we have white and black and so I need red. So we, so we Oh, okay. It. I didn't know there was like a system. <laughs> okay, I get it. It makes yes. sense. So I got a Christmas stocking for the puppy Cute. that hasn't been conceived oh, yet. But wow. I'm a dog person too. Yeah. So I'm very glad. So we have a lot we can talk about. Your show, your podcast kind of covers kind of a pretty wide yeah. range of topics that are ongoing in I mean, you just did a whole show, like a short one about the Loudoun County parents and yes. parental rights. And yeah. Okay. So I have cover to... the gamut. My idea That's is right. to help people think. Yeah. So I'm not, I, I, it comes from a conservative perspective, obviously, because I'm a conservative and, and that's my job in politics, but I try to formulate the show so that you could share it with anybody. I mm -hmm. would want you to be able to share it with your mom who voted for Biden or mm -hmm. your dad who voted for Trump or, you know, I try to think about it in terms of this is a podcast where I want us to break down talking points. We have so many talking points. Social media is about sound bites and 280 characters. Mm. Everybody has clever talking points, but a lot of people never think about what they mean. They'd mm -hmm. say it out loud and then they're like, oh, like one talking point that gets under my skin and I think about a lot is when pro-abortion advocates say that abortion is a race issue and that if, you know, to help communities of color, we have to leave open reproductive rights that sounds good in a soundbite right communities of color mm -hmm. who <laughs> hates communities of color apparently i do <laughs> but, but when you dig under it what you're really telling me is the world will be better with fewer black babies in it that's right you know that's a talking point it sounds clever on the top but underneath it's insidious so i don't think we that's awesome we exam and i think that's what makes us tense too is we're not examining what we believe mm -hmm. so we're we don't feel content in what we believe. And mm -hmm. then we feel like we've got to bludgeon people with it because we just don't have good arguments. Yeah. You had one show I particularly loved was Are Republicans Racist? Yes. And you kind of broke down like, okay, so when you say this and, you know, and then you hear the right say this, this isn't what they're saying. This right. Is, this is the perspective of conservatives that you should have an ID because your right to vote is very precious and we don't want anyone to steal right. your vote, which is why we need to be able to prove who you are when you go vote. It's exactly. not because Republicans think that brown, black, or whoever right. people can't, should be, have the right to vote. Right. Yeah. So. Digging into those tropes. So it's like, I wanted to, I did that for my liberal listeners because I do have quite a few and I wanted to give them a reason to feel, to not feel scared about Republicans because yeah. I feel like there's so much fear being thrown right. around mm -hmm. and fear sells. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I don't want to convert anybody. That's up to you. It's not my job to decide how you're going to vote, but I want you to give a reason to not hate your neighbor. Mm. Okay. Well, speaking of fear, let's talk about conservatives. Yeah. Um, and the general. They're scary. And yeah. We, yeah. Very uh, <laughs> yes. We're very scary people, apparently. Um, but conservatives and the general pro-life movement, because mm -hmm. I sometimes think that political conservatives, you know, just broad conservatives uh, are kind of scared of the pro-lifers that it's kind of like oh here come the pro-lifers trying to rope me into doing this or I was at a um 
political function uh, with the, with President Trump, um, which, by the way, I did delete him on Twitter, but it was really refreshing to hear his speech, just saying. I yeah. laughed in the middle of it because I had another meeting. I saw him at CPAC. But I had the same experience. I was like, like oh, oh, you know what? It's nice hearing from him. I know. I was <laughs> like, I miss oh, this guy. I miss, I, I miss hearing yeah. these comments. I, I thought um, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple of you know, he was talking about the election being solved. I was like, okay, mm. just stop. Just stop. But the rest of it was pretty fun. But um, I was at this event and I was all dressed up and like I think I posted an image on my um it was Instagram people were like holy cow Kristen can dress oh, you up. clean up good yeah it was, it was a process <laughs> and it was very painful and my back still hurts from had those spanks that night don't just say but um I I go I went because I thought this was a great opportunity for students to life to kind of get our name in front of you know the broader conservative mm-hmm. movement because I I worked in conservative politics but then I I really was sort of cautious when I when we launched Students for Life to not be seen as overly conservative. Yes. Now the cat's out of the bag. I mean, apparently everyone knows I'm a conservative, and so <laughs> so I'm kind of embracing it more. Of like, well, okay, if if I'm going to be known as a conservative, or you know, mm-hmm. st- all these students are going to protest me for saying that there's only two genders and sexes um let's let's use it to our advantage and let's try to get some conservatives people who may have voted for trump gone out door knocked um first time in politics got excited but don't really know about the pro-life movement they've Mm. never gone and prayed in front of a planned parenthood they've never joined the pro-life movement for the the annual pro-life march or something like that um but it was it was an illuminating night of conversations i would you know everybody would kind of ask um uh, oh, what do you do? I tell them. They get excited when I mention, like, oh, we were just in Virginia. We mm-hmm. were the only pro-life organization door knocking Virginia. So they got all amped up. And um, and then, you know, they kind of pull me aside later and say, well, what about rape? Mm-hmm. Or um, I had a couple women say, you know, I really like what you do. I love that you're going head to head with those liberals on campus. But And I know Planned Parenthood is supposed to be bad. But, like, doesn't Planned Parenthood do some really good things, though, too? And um, it was interesting because I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to have a lot of, like, elementary conversations. Yeah. So what's up with that? That, I can't, <laughs> that, that really, I feel as surprised as you do. Okay. And maybe I'm just in a bubble because I. I just feel so strongly about the sanctity of life. Mm. And I assume, I always assume other conservatives do. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it just doesn't come up. I think I'm assuming that everyone's thinking the way I do. But I have met specifically younger conservatives Mm -hmm. these days in the political movement who who are that that is their their take on it right Mm -hmm. i i value life i don't Mm -hmm. believe in abortion you know but and it's always it's always rape i mean obviously that is a big hump for a lot of people to get over because you're you're thinking about the mom but not the Mm -hmm. child Mm -hmm. and obviously you want to have compassion for the mom Mm -hmm. that's a normal human response of a decent person so i get that but i'm always shocked at how many christians self-proclaimed christians Mm -hmm. make that argument to me because at the end of the day i'm like yes that is it's a terrible occurrence but then you can't punish two people for that you Mm -hmm. know the mom's been punished but I think we both agree that when you end the life, whether it's created in rape or in love, when you decide to mm-hmm. terminate a pregnancy, to use those terms, you're ending a future, right? Mm-hmm. We can all agree yeah. that that's a future that will no longer exist. That's right. And that means if that's a future, then that means that's a human. Mm-hmm. And then if that's a human, then that means you have effectively terminated a human life. And so that's what we have to deal with. And I find it really odd that Christians particularly evangelical Christians these mm-hmm. days don't don't seem to grasp that or want to. And maybe it is mm-hmm. because I think particularly, and I'm speaking as an evangelical Christian. And these were all, I, I believe, all evangelicals. So really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I See, I see this a little bit within the evangelical church, and that's a broad term, but mm-hmm. um, I wonder if a lot of it is just people, no one likes to be disliked. You know, and the political discourse surrounding issues like abortion these days is Mm. so heated and so cruel and so judgmental. It's not like back in my parents' days where you could have an opinion on it, but that opinion didn't 
dictate your whole life or your whole character. You know, people <laughs> felt certain ways and you talked about it around the kitchen table, but no one thought, well, yeah. you must be evil. Mm -hmm. But now it's like we're in this black and white. It's yeah, just you right. are here or you are there and there is no in between. Mm -hmm. And I just think there's a lot of people out there who are are cowardly. Mm. They feel more attached to being liked than to being holy. Yeah, I think that's a mic drop. Can you just take that microphone and just <laughs> shove it on the table right now? <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, I, I, I think that... Yeah, I mean, I remember when I worked at the RNC, and this was in 2004, 2005-ish, and I remember at that time, it was kind of like an anomaly to be pro-life and be working in Republican politics. Wow. They, they knew that the base was pro-life, yeah. but like if you were like a political operative, you weren't really pro-life. You know, the base might be pro-life, but you weren't. And, um, and I remember, I actually, I remember a lot of heated discussions I got into with my boss, my superiors, my colleagues um and then i i do think to his credit love him or hate him president trump when he came in and brought in this whole new group of political cooperatives even though he didn't have a pro-life past i guess mm -hmm. you could say the operatives that he brought in who worked throughout the rnc who worked in the administration they were very pro-life and, and so we've we've come a long way in terms of generally now i think you could walk into the rnc's offices in dc and you could say raise your hand if you're against abortion and i bet 90 some percent of the staff would probably say yeah that's mm -hmm. me i'm against abortion but i do think this rape um question that folks have of how to deal with a woman who survived sexual assault who has become pregnant um, I think that's one of the, the things we really have to get over and we have to talk about and, and kind of really hammer home and ask those questions like you just said like is it a, is it a future that's been ended and what kind of future a human future mm -hmm. and that's a human being and um, because I, I feel like we there is still a disconnect I mean I, I was a little taken back by how many people were still you know they had gotten the memo that Planned Parenthood was bad yeah that's kind of crazy but then to like me. Yeah. but they still do good do things. they like what I know. everybody says that but i'm like like what I what know. does i honestly i almost was snarky in my, my reply, only experiences with planned parenthood have been and i i have never walked into a planned parenthood myself to avail myself of any of their services my only experiences have been when i've lived in the inner city they're mm -hmm. everywhere Sure. Right now, I live in the posh suburbs of Orange County, which is where we're broadcasting <laughs> from right now. And I couldn't tell you where my local Planned Parenthood is, but I could walk to three when I lived in Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was a eighty-six percent black population, yeah. mm -hmm. and most of the people living under the poverty level. Mm -hmm. So I, I know, and I do know that my daughter's school tells me if she wants birth control, she can go to Planned Parenthood, or she can simply make a request and Planned Parenthood will show up at the school with pills for her and they can have that th because in the state of California you don't have to notify your parents if you want to engage in that sort of advising with Planned Parenthood so that's what I know of Planned Parenthood I know Planned wow. Parenthood likes to tell us that they provide mammograms they don't or that they provide birth control but those are things you can get anywhere. If mm -hmm, people knew mm -hmm. the amount of money that goes into Planned Parenthood, where is it going? Mm -hmm. What? Do, how much does birth control cost? It doesn't cost that much. No, it does not. It's not for as much funding as they still get to this day. So I, the idea that Planned, Parent, Planned Parenthood has done what the pro-life movement needs to do, which is they've branded themselves as these champions and mm -hmm. they've managed to like hold that spot. And now it's like Susan B. Komen, right? Like now you don't have to provide any proof. You're just associated with mm -hmm. good. You don't like students for life. That's what, you know, that's what students for life needs to be like. Just the name comes up. Doesn't matter what y'all have done. Just associated with awesome people. And we never have to oh, prove I'm ourselves and we never have to do anything good. We just, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Oh, that'd be great. But it's Fantastic. marketing. It's branding, right? Yeah. They've mm -hmm. done such a good job with it that now we're all playing catch up. Even people we think are allies, mm. you know, we're all playing yeah. catch up to that perception. Yeah. No, I was... I would, you know, I, I tried so hard not to be snarky because I was in the formal dress, but <laughs> I was just like, yeah, you know, I guess the Nazis built some good roads in Germany. I True. heard too. Like, I mean, like, 
yes, evil people, I guess, have also done good things. Oh, sure. It's like, not everything a person does if they're evil maybe has always been evil. I don't know. Slavery built a lot of stuff in this country. That's true. I you mean, know? like our White House. Yeah, look at the White House. Like, <laughs> slavery built a lot of institutions in this country that we still... You know, we we get a lot of good out of them, but mm-hmm. I don't think anybody would say slavery was like a noble institution. <sighs> exactly right. Yes. Except if you're a pro life speaker on college campus, because then you're obviously I'm like worse every I S T yes. word that you can ever think of. Yeah, there were like new terms. That we're get, all that get we're all Hitler now. Yes, we are. That's- <laughs> just, if you're not on the far progressive left, yeah, that's it. That no, that I was speaking at Wellesley. Um, three weeks ago and I was so excited because it was like my biggest protest of me ever so it was so awesome there was like 500 students that protested against me I was really excited I get wow. I get excited by that stuff yeah I've never uh, been protested that much I know see I know I know see but you have millions of podcasts I know. Valid, so you're still <laughs> kicking my ass but um it was it was interesting because they had this like 30 page um document of like things that I apparently tweeted I sure uh uh things i've said on tv some of them i you know i've been very blunt um and it was like this all of these words like i had to google these words these descriptors that they were calling me because yeah. i didn't even know like some of these words existed um that all these students signed but that's because i was a, known as a conservative because it was known that um i've spoken out against hormonal birth control um mm. you know i found out that i'm an ableist that i I hate people with disabilities, which oh, is, that was a new one for me. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. I think my children with disabilities would be really, uh, you know, upset. They don't count. <laughs> That's right. They don't count. <laughs> That's right. It's like black and serves. They, they don't, don't count. count. There's no such thing. Yeah, yeah. There's no. Such, it's just a blimp. It's yeah. just a blimp. Um, but yeah, it was like it was it was very interesting. And so I think that you know, in terms of getting general conservatives, we've gotten them. The, the movement I think has come, yeah, come pretty home. far yeah. yeah I mean from the days of like Phyllis Shafley fighting at the RNC convention so they wouldn't I mean I don't know if you ever read um one of Phyllis's last books I wrote the afterword too oh. I was really excited about it um but it was about how the Republican Party became pro-life and it was kind of the you know those first couple of conventions that she attended and they created this RNC for life organization to, to get pro-life into the Republican platform and mm-hmm. the fights that she had mm-hmm. um, with people like Bill Crystal and things like that trying to keep it in the platform um, and so we've I think Phyllis's legacy continues on today where the the party is largely pro-life but there's still more work I think we've got to do with the broader conservative movement I mean even today like I'll go to like um, conservative student organizations I'm like oh let's partner Mm -hmm. and I get the we like what you do but we you know that's the issue we don't talk about yeah. Like, but your founder is on TV and tweeting about this issue. Yeah. Um, my cameraman's laughing because he was at one of our recent conversations that he watched it happen. And I was like, well, but they're like, oh, yeah, but we as an organization will not talk about that issue. Yeah. And so it's still like largely like a taboo. It's the third rail. Yeah. yeah. It, there are there are so many people who are like, oh, because it's so polarizing that. I actually think this isn't maybe both sides have a lot of culpability here part of the problem is this if if you're talking to anybody who identifies as left of center or Mm -hmm. left wing they're gonna shut you down sometimes if you want to talk to them about uh, parental rights or you know taxes taxes or whatever as the the abortion issue will shut them down then you get no more words mm-hmm. in with them then you have no more credibility so some people there is a strategy we used to do this in the school choice movement we would I, i'm a big school choice advocate and back in the early days one you're of the racist, things that, by the way you're a big racist i heard i heard <laughs> <laughs> that's what i heard <laughs> and but one of the things that we would always be told early on is don't address teachers unions don't talk about the scourge of teachers unions because we have to get democrats to partner with us there are a lot of democrats in the school choice movement and but they're also pro-union people we don't want to turn them off with union busting language we want to embrace as many people Mm. as will come so we always had to like hush keep that hush and you know what it didn't really help it did in the end it didn't really help because teachers unions have been 
They hated you anyway. Jerking us around for the last two years with our kids. Turns out they hated us anyway. Yep. It turns out that it didn't matter what you said about the teachers unions. They were going to come against you and throw everything against you. And so this past two years, as I've been watching my kids languish and and figure out how we're, what we're going to do for their future, I was just like, well, you know what? Gloves are off. You know, yep, you guys have right. done nothing for us. Why am I tiptoeing around hoping that people will ignore this part of reality so we can talk about the other part? If you don't want to talk about reality, that's on you. That is not my problem. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe I understand why some conservative organizations mm. would not want to trip into that third rail, but I think we're doing ourselves a disservice by by shying away from that mm -hmm. it's cowardly we're trying to be the bigger people and we're dealing with children hmm. so once again mic drop just take that mic <laughs> just, uh, i mean i had just had this so i was at saint mary's the other week um college and it's a pretty it's a catholic school it's right across the street from notre dame and whatever it's all girls school yes. um and I made, you know, during the course of my speech, I might have had a Mountain Dew before I started <laughs> talking. And so I, I made some flippant, like, remarks about, like, well, there's two genders. Or um, I said something. I was talking about the uh, oh conversation goodness. at Wellesley. Oh, my goodness. I was like, well, there's only w women women there. Well, except for some women who have penises or something like that. So I made, like, a couple of, like, just, like, funny, uh -huh. like, little quips. Uh -huh. um, because I, you know, I was caffeinated. And uh, so this professor at the end, who's clearly pro-choice, gets up. And she's like, you know... And of course, like everybody agrees with about half of my speech on college campuses, even though they hate me, uh -huh. they agree with half of my speech because I talk about pregnant and parenting rights and mm -hmm. how do we support pregnant and parenting students. So even yeah. if you came into the room and hated the first half of my speech, you yeah. should end the speech liking me. I actually should swip, flip it around and make them like me first if I was smart. But anyway, um, she, you know, she clearly was not with me on abortion, you know, a professor at Catholic Obviously, college. It makes yeah. sense, I guess. Um but she, you know, said the thing, well, wouldn't you make, you know, more allies if you wouldn't make these comments that hurt transgender people or, or she's an anti-trans, she the word to it. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I said, no, I believe in telling people the truth. And I have friends who are transgender. Um, and I certainly believe that we should show every human being respect that they deserve as because they're a human being. But I, I do think we should tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, this is actually a very dangerous movement. And um, it was interesting because I started having a conversation with the students after, you know, she huffed out after that. <laughs> um, and, you know, the point I, I talked to students, I said, did you understand what I was saying? And they loved it because I guess she had been giving them problems. But it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, she she was well known to the students her life group on it's, campus. The second someone comes up to you and yeah. says, you could be a better ally. Yes. I was like, red flag. Well, and that is it, what you were saying about the school children movement i was like this that was the exact link you know conversation i have the students is look they're going to hate you anyway yeah. and you can use all the diversity inclus inclusive language that you want yeah but the fact that i have republican next to my name that i worked to the republican national committee um that i said that i'm a christian and a christ follower it doesn't matter they're still going to hate me and so you can go in like circles all day long trying to do everything and we've had this happen in this pro-life movement before where mm -hmm. pro-life groups are like oh we're gonna make people on campus like us yeah and so we're gonna take on every issue instead of just talking about how abortion is a violent wrong we're gonna talk about poverty we're gonna talk i mean they talk about everything yeah uh death penalty all these issues and i'm like you know, immigration especially in texas this has come up and i'm like well it's important to talk about those issues but do you think maybe you're limiting one you kind of limit people from joining your group because if you have like 25 issues that right you need people to agree with then that's a lot of cooks in the kitchen yes yeah. and especially like if you're a you know a pro-life group that says you're against the death penalty, well then a lot of protestants right. aren't even going to take a they're not even going to join your group um and you won't even be, but it's interesting because i'm like they're still going to hate you it you're doesn't matter how many liberal leaning <laughs> yes. activities you yes. do or you know the fact that you say you're pro lgbt and then we had students for life group i forget what school they had like a uh, they were like we'll have a booth at the lgbtq health fair mm -hmm. and it was just you know they just educate students about the dangers of planned parenthood and they didn't really take a stance on anything lgbt yeah but they got kicked out 
all of the fair. That's hilarious. Because they I were pro life. They went. Just yeah, I mean, I, I love that. They I went. love the gumption to yeah. like go, but it was interesting because yeah. I'm like, here you are trying to be like yeah. super like inclusive and cool, and it's still not enough. They still hate you. It will because never, you're against abortion. It will never be enough. I always tell. Uh, I get a lot of letters from listeners. Um, to my podcast that ask mostly from from white listeners who say okay. Kira what do I do when someone accuses me of being racist you know I'm, yeah. it hurts me I'm not racist like mm-hmm. for everybody has different reasons for saying it I wasn't raised that way or my uncle's black or you know but if you I've say you're not it. racist you're racist to them I mean you can't this is the like point you can't I'm win. making you can't win and I always tell people and the late great Rush Limbaugh used to say this too like they're gonna hate you the, the pro it it's not you that's the problem you are not the problem mm. it is what you stand for that is the problem mm. you will never be good enough this is why people like people like us lean on faith mm. to find our identity right we don't find it in the approval of others we don't find it in the political that's opinions right. of others we don't find it in how many allies we can gather around us our our identity is already secure and so that's really cool to say on a Sunday sermon and everybody can leave feeling really great hearing the pastor say Mm. our identity is in Jesus but when you come face to face with the true ugliness Mm. of people judging you without knowing you judging your whole life and placing the burdens of all evil throughout all of history on your shoulders Mm. just because you enter you you uttered one phrase Mm -hmm. or picked up one cause that's when it gets real Mm -hmm. it's like i don't i don't i think we're all we've all become way too comfortable in our freedom and we forgot that freedom is an uncomfortable and participatory process It, it is not static it must always be practiced it must always be engaged in that means you've always got to be pushing the boundaries for how far you can go with your language with your speech with your with your right to expression Hmm. and it's not going to be easy it's not going to be comfortable when we're comfortable that's when we find ourselves in this mess where now half the people in america can't even speak out loud and Hmm. we got to be okay with being uncomfortable we got to be okay with being hated not to say that it's not hurtful especially when it's your family it's your friends Hmm. it's your dad your mom like i've been there i've been there all up and down the spectrum it is hurtful mm. but at the same time you can't mute the truth because you're afraid of what other people are going to think about you we're not called to do that and even if you're not a person of faith if you're an intelligent person you still understand that mm. there's there's not enough sustenance in the approval of others to keep you going through the rest of your life you've mm. got to find it somewhere else so i always tell conservatives who are afraid of being called called racist if someone calls you a racist so are you no then move on you're not going to make your case to this person they've already decided everything about you Mm -hmm. i just i loved everything you just said (laughs) amen sister i mean we need to send it out to like every students for life leader because i you get that all the time especially now the the school year is in full swing everyone's back on campus and it's you know excuse you saying extremely polarized and the level of cyber bullying especially with our high school students for life leaders Mm. is insane and these aren't just children cyber bullying other children these are like adults people who have like jobs and like could go to jail cyber bullying students and it, and it, i do think it's it's not you know pro life young people aren't immune to that you right. know that they still yeah. it hurts them if someone yes. calling them a racist or that they don't care about women who've survived sexual assault because they're against abortion um, or that they're ableist because they're against abortion or they're a transphobe because they associate with me because I'm apparently the biggest transphobe out there. Um, and it's like, it, and I laugh. Like these things don't bother me because you're exactly right. right. Like my identity is not based on what somebody and you I have, have other met. things going on. Yeah. You're a mom. You're a wife. Like no. these are very important roles in our lives that help give us stability. And these kids haven't had mm-hmm. the chance to develop develop it. And that's why I think it's really important. I think like the other thing that's really important is is preparing our our kids our families from the start right like raising families raising kids who can be 
strong in character. You'll we, we all go through that thing where we're finding ourselves and we're not sure. But, mm. you know, one thing I would always tell my kids is um, particularly in this age of like gender identity and sexual identity. I always told my kids. You showed them the gender unicorn, right? And you had them pick it all out. I don't, I can't, I don't have the right charts. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I would tell them, you don't have to go making up an identity. You mm. already are somebody. You're a Davis. Mm. You are a follower of Christ. You mm. are an American. You already have your identity. Mm. You don't need to go making mm-hmm. up your identity. And there are too many people out there, a lot of your friends mm-hmm. who are trying to become something, you know, and they haven't had, they haven't had anybody to tell them that they already are something, mm. you know, you That's, already are. This is why you're Tina Whittington's <laughs> favorite podcaster. Cause I'm like listening to you. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is Tina Whittington's. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I, uh, I'll tell you a story about my uh, son who's 19. Now he goes to school in Chicago. And when he was, uh, nine or ten i sat him down and i showed him some pictures of aborted babies i Mm -hmm. showed him some pictures of abortions and um he was horrified rightly so he was Mm -hmm. horrified and uh my husband said why would you do (laughs) why would you do that Mm -hmm. that is that's terrible like he's traumatized i'm like no 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 i did it because i wanted him to know that as a man that there were good, there are going to be people in your life who are going to ask you to have opinion an opinion about this. This is like an absolute in American life. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to ask you one day to have an opinion about it. And I'm never going to dictate your opinions to you. You can decide for yourself how you want to think. But if you're going to talk about the issue of abortion, you need to know what it is. Mm-hmm. I don't want you thinking about like it's just a word that starts with the letter A. There, it, it, there, it, mm-hmm. it is an action. It has consequences, and here are the consequences. And if you are horrified by it, that is the right reaction. You still mm-hmm. may go on to believe that abortion is right, but don't ever go into a conversation mm-hmm. and you don't really know what you're talking about. Yeah. I make sure my kids really know what we're talking about. We're, we're not. There's no like printing it up. Mm-hmm. You, if you're gonna have an opinion on what to my mind is the most important issue Mm -hmm. in life then you darn well better know what you're talking about i know i've thought about that for marketing campaign uh like and i don't know a succinct way to say it but if every child if every person looked at abortion for what every child when they first find out it is yeah like there would be no abortion because every child when i had the conversation with my 10 year old yeah i mean they're absolutely yeah, like what horrified. how can you do this i know it's 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 gotten so bad though because gunner then blames everything on democrats like we were on like this weird road and the, the construction was weird and gunner was like let me guess a democrat or nice. just a liberal did that and i'm like well okay i was like you can be a liberal and be a good yeah. person but yeah, yeah. probably a liberal but maybe do that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah so now it's kind of the opposite way so i'm so gunner's not allowed to debate politics until he's watched every video oh, that funny. prager U's ever put out i told him i said that's the baseline you have to <laughs> every prager you little short video uh and then you can debate me and anybody else you want because right now you're gonna just get me like well, bitch you know, slapped by what, somebody I don't what, know one time my my son and i were having a debate about abortion as he was getting older and mm-hmm. becoming a teenager and he's like well what about rape yeah. what about and so we were having a little debate my daughter who's five years younger than him uh at, at that time i had not really gone into it with her and so she was like well what's an abortion and so I said, well, gosh, try explaining abortion out loud, especially to a kid who might not know how everything in the woman's body works. So I was like, well, an abortion is when a woman decides she doesn't want her baby for whatever reason. She can't have the baby. And she goes into the doctor and the doctor basically reaches in inside her and snips the baby out. And pulls the baby and then she's like and then the baby dies like, yeah the baby dies that's the point and her response her little like eight or nine year old ears response was how can that be legal why isn't that against the law mm. you know like a normal response but is every yeah. every, every child <laughs> yeah i i, I can't she think could of, not 
I can't classic. ever think of any child yeah. learning this information yeah. and being like, no, oh, yeah, but it's her body. Yeah. <laughs> no, because she's because they're still so close to it. Yeah. She's still so close at that. She's still so close to being that little being mm-hmm. that little fetus. So she for sure feels it like the idea that she could maybe not be mm-hmm. here. I'm actually thinking this would be a really great video, but then I'm thinking everybody will hate it because there's actually people get very upset, though, to find out you've told your child. All the time. People tell me what a terrible parent Oh, I yeah. Am. I released a yeah. video of me telling Gunner, yeah. and I had some of my abortion tools. And Gunner had already kind of known, but I, I we we had some camera folks at my, um, at my house, and so we sat down and they filmed it. And people were like, this is child abuse. You're committing child abuse. I'm like, why? I'm not just, abortion's not child yeah, abuse. Child, yeah, I would but think let's talk about what child abuse really <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, that's the topic that I just told my son. the neck of a baby in the womb. That's fine, but my body, my choice. But you tell no. I mean, yeah, it is disturbing. Mm. It is disturbing. You know, but there's a lot of disturbing things that we have to be honest yeah. with our kids about. You know what? Uh, I have to. My husband and I have to sit down and have the conversation mainly with my son about what you do when the police pull you over. That's a disturbing conversation because we've both had our own traumatizing experiences with police and racism and it's a real thing and we've lived in communities where it's a problem. That that's I don't want to sit down and talk to my son about that because I don't want him to think of all police officers as racist or I don't want him to feel fear when he's mm-hmm. dealing with law enforcement. They're there to protect him mm-hmm. as an American citizen. It's a tough conversation to have. Mm-hmm. That is half the problem in this country is too many of y'all are not having the tough conversations with your kids because you're cowards and you're raising kids that don't know enough about life. And then that's how we get idiots who come out and tell us that women have penises. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, that's it. I mean, you just answered the crux of my question for you today. Of what do we do when we're talking to conservatives and trying to bring more conservatives into the broader pro-life movement as donors as activists as more committed voters and it's just stop being cowards yeah. because that's it's it's got it's good in the sense of we've moved the culture so far we're now being anti-abortion is is socially acceptable people will say it like a more logo people were saying it they're mm-hmm. okay with it but then they still kind of have these exceptions and so we still have to keep pushing to, to, to challenge I think folks to stop being cowardly so this is I'm so glad you stopped by for this chat yeah today. me too oh, we need to do this more because this was a lot of fun I hope that we need to talk about I mean, we need to have you come back on talk specifically about race and abortion because yeah absolutely. that's we I mean it is unbelievable you know you know the history with Margaret Sanger of course I, and you can't even by the way I don't know I used to go to NYU they had a, Mar- they had a Margaret Sanger Center and they had all of her writings they were public it's all gone now. You can't find any of her well, stuff. Well, they've erased Yes. Her, I mean, it yeah. apparently still exists probably in some building that yeah. I can't get to in, in y- on NYU's campus. Yeah. But, like, all of this stuff is now, like, hidden behind firewalls. But we know there's institutional ra- – like, I know institutional racism exists because I know we still find Planned Parenthood. Like, I, 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 I have – anybody who's listened to my podcast, Tina Whittington <laughs> – it's heard me talk. I have an episode on systemic racism, yep. which a lot of conservatives did not like because they thought I was taking on the language of the left. But I was saying, no, there is systemic racism. It's just not in the same places people try to tell us it is. Mm-hmm. One place is in the abortion industry. Mm-hmm. If you want to talk about a system that was set up for a specific purpose to thwart the 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 yeah. life and success of minorities. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. It's right there. It's it was literally clean. set up for that reason. Literally set it's up for that reason. systemic racism. And now we're so far from that that a lot of people go, well, the mission, that's what it was originally, but we're not that anymore. But if you try to say that about America to some people, right, they'll be like, no, no, no. Once those Once Nazis, they may have killed six million Jews <laughs> yeah. in concentration camps, but all the Nazis I know today, they're yeah. really good people. Yeah. They just want safe people. neighborhoods. Yep. Yeah, that, that sounds just good family people. Equally as awful. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, we, there's we, a lot to be said. On we need issue. to do a whole other episode on that. So, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. You all need to make sure you subscribe and listen to Just Listen to Yourself with Kara Davis. It is an excellent podcast. I don't even listen to that many podcasts, but Tina sold me oh. a couple months ago that I have to subscribe. <laughs> and listen to Kira's podcast so I've got to make time it's like you and like Joe Rogan the oh, podcast wow. so there you go that's where I'm getting my information from so okay You're, <laughs> I don't know what that says about you but you know. <laughs>
there happy some, there's some good conversation. I like to have different conversations oh, with different folks. So um, the Leah Remy one was really fascinating. I was listening to that one. The other oh, day. yeah. That was great. So, okay, enough talking. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for listening to Explicitly Pro-Life today. I hope this conversation was helpful for you as we go forward uh, in our conversations to uh, woo more conservatives into the pro-life movement because we need uh, everyone to join us to fight against the violence of abortion because we all know Roe is going to be reversed and we're going to have a 50-state battle here pretty soon. Bye. Hey.